Hello and welcome to my channel. Now that the summer has warmed the waters, I wanted to try swimming in Edwardian style. So I decided to make my own swimming costume consisting of combinations and a skirt. I didn't use a specific pattern or an inspiration image, but I tried to combine elements I've seen on period bathing costumes. Swimming and beach life was morally questionable still in the 18th century. People did swim, of course, but it was done in nude or wearing undergarments. The first bathing costumes came about during Victorian times when bathing became more popular. Modesty was of utmost importance, which meant that the swimsuits covered the swimmer from head to toe. Even then, the swimmers were transported to water with peculiar-looking bathing machines, which allowed the bathers to slip into the water in privacy. Still, women wore large bathing gowns and men long bathing suits. However, the moral started to loosen towards the turn of the 20th century. Women's skirts shortened and the high necklines became more open. At first, the women still protected their skin by wearing stockings, bathing slippers, bathing caps and gloves. Men's long swimsuits turned into shorter ones, often decorated with stripes. Then the women discarded the stockings and skirts altogether, although short skirts were still seen in the 1920s. Not that you can't sport a skirted swimsuit today. The first modern knitted and body-hugging one-piece swimsuit was invented by an Australian swimmer, Annette Kellerman. I started by drafting a pattern for the bloomers. I already have a basic pattern that I drew using the instructions from an 1892 book and another pattern that I used for my Edwardian drawers. Thus, I could use these existing patterns to help draw the new pattern. I wanted the bloomers to reach to my knee and to be pretty straight compared to the flaring Edwardian drawers I made earlier. I correct the fit by comparing the pattern to my Edwardian drawers pattern. As you can see, the Edwardian drawers pattern is much narrower than the original pattern, even if it's meant to be quite big and flaring. There is a lot of extra width that I can remove. Then I smooth out the waistline and adjust the length of the bloomers. For the bodies, I can use the Edwardian shirtwaist pattern that I've drafted for myself. However, I decided to use the sleeves from my 1901 summer jacket to make the puffed sleeves. I turned the two-part sleeve pattern to a one-part sleeve by splitting the undersleeve pattern in two and joining the pieces on both sides of the upper sleeve. I also added some width to allow for some nice gathers at the sleeve hem. For the skirt pattern, I decided to use the truly Victorian 1898 walking skirt pattern that I shortened to the knee length. Edwardian bathing costumes were usually made out of wool. However, I didn't really have a suitable wool fabric in hand, so I substituted with this blue Italian cotton shirting. I only had 2.2 meters of the fabric, but I managed to cut all the required pieces out of it with very careful placement of pattern pieces. I started the construction by pinning and sewing all the big straight seams that required no thinking. I then finished the seams with my overlocker. I had left extra width at the center front to make the buttoning blackets. To support the buttons and buttonholes I ironed on some fusible interfacing. I meant to iron it on the facing side but I guess I was a bit distracted as I ironed it on the wrong side. Luckily it doesn't really matter that much. Then I could sew the buttoning packets in place. The shoulder seams are next. The back piece is slightly wider to allow for the shoulder blades, so I need to ease it in.
because this is how far I got this morning. I sort of made this shirt waist bodice. As you can see, I didn't get the side seams even, but it's all right. So I have this bodice here and I have the bloomers. And the front is still open because I have to put some kind of fly on it. And then I'm going to put a waistband and I'm going to join these two parts together so that there's this kind of uh, overall jumpsuit kind of thing and uh, then I have this skirt which is open at the back and it goes over this whole thing and closes at the center back like this I'm going to add a small placket in here and a button or a hook and eye. I don't have to put a big placket because I have these bloomers underneath and you know, even if they show, nobody can really see the difference between the skirt and the bloomers. I have the sleeves here. I haven't sewn them on because they need usually some kind of fitting and I don't like that stage. And I might still shorten them and add some kind of uh, shaping or or ruffled cuffs or something. For the waistbands, this is the biggest piece of fabric I have left out of these 2.2 meters of fabric and this should be enough to make two waistbands. Although I might have to use even this part to go over the plackets. This is almost a zero waste project. I didn't have that much fabric to begin with but if I do a waistband for the skirt and for this combination thingy, it'll be all right. What I need to do, I have to make a mock-up waistband for the combinations part because I'm so worried that if this waistband is too short that I cannot bend down or or actually swim in it. And that sort of a, is something you want to do with a swimming costume. So I want to be, I want this costume to be functional even if I'm probably not going to use it for swimming that much. See the sailor color is still missing, so these bits are going to be cut away. And I'm going to cut this neckline a little bit bigger, and then I'm going to add the sailor color. But for now, I'm leaving it like this because that's something that I can do later. And you can see that I've used some pins to gather up this excess width of the blouse and going to gather these bodies to fit with the waistband so that it looks nice. The bloomers need a button fly. I use the leftover scraps to cut the pieces for the fly and add fuseful interfacing to support them. Then I sew the fly in place. Now both sides of the fly are done and I only need to add some securing stitches to keep the fly closed at the bottom. This is my mock-up waistband, so the fit is just right. I can now use my mock-up to actually draft the waistband. The back side of the bloomers is quite baggy, but that allows me a lot of movement, which is essential in a swimming costume. The armhole is a little small, so I have to make them a little bit bigger, but that's alright. And otherwise, it's progressing really nicely. Now the waistband is on. I had to sort of piece it together because I didn't have enough fabric to make a continuous waistband. But it's alright, it doesn't really show. 
I think it's time to make the color and for that I thought I could use this jacket I made before as sort of a model to mark the neckline because I like the neckline in here so I don't want it to be too tight if you look at the slits I've made they sort of mark where it sits nicely I have to make slits because otherwise it was way too tight. Here, I unfortunately ripped it a bit when I tried it on, so I decided that, uh, okay, the rip marks the position of the neckline down here because it didn't rip very far. What all the Period pattern says is to have like an inch in here so that the color has room to fade better. Also now I know that my neckline must be a little bit bigger so I start from here. So this is my neckline. This is my center back. This is my center front and my armhole goes somewhere around here. And now I have to think how big it needs to be. At this point I realized that it would be much easier to draft the color on a mannequin. So I cut out the pattern and started draping. So right now I'm finishing the waistband. I'm sewn down like this and added just a tiny square of fabric here because I didn't have enough fabric to make a one whole waistband. I also made a placket, it's here, and hemmed the other side so it looks neat and tidy. But you may see is that my fingers are turning blue and that worries me because I was thinking of doing a white color and I don't want it to turn light blue so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to sink this skirt and the jumpsuit combinations part into water and I'm going to add some vinegar into it and I hope that vinegar will help to set the color. So I put my blue bathing costume to soak in vinegar water solution and proceeded with my white color hoping that the vinegar would do its magic. I decorate the white color with contrasting ribbon which was really popular during Edwardian times. And now I can attach the lower color to the upper color. Now the color is finished and it only needs pressing. After the blue costume had soaked for a while and I had allowed it to dry, I decided to make a little test. I basted some white cotton fabric and white cotton tape to the bloomers and put them in the sink to soak to see whether the blue color would dye the white cotton parts. While the bloomers were then drying out once again, I proceeded to hem my skirt. Luckily for me, the vinegar did set to dye. My white fabric and ribbon stayed white and I could proceed with my original plan. I first add the white ribbon to the skirt hem. Two rows of ribbon is even prettier and the weight of ribbons helps to keep the skirt from blowing up in the wind. On a whim I added a third ribbon to decorate the waistband. 
I finished the skirt by sewing on a hook and eye. Now it was time to add white ribbon to the jumpsuit underneath. I started by decorating both sides of the buttoning band. I then added two ribbons on the waistband and used the same ribbon to make elastic casings to gather the leg openings and the sleeves. Now I have sewn on the collar. And I also attached this strip of bias tape. And I'm going to trim the seams and then turn the tape the wrong side to cover the seam allowance and then I can sew it on. I just turn this down and over and I pin it here like this. Now the color is finished. I have also threaded elastic to the casings at the sleeves and the leg openings that I made out of the white ribbon. Now I need to add the buttons and the buttonholes. Now it's time to recap this project. I think it was really successful and I was pleasantly surprised how it turned out because I didn't do any mock-ups. I just drafted this and sewed it and yeah, it's looking much nicer than I expected it to be. Here's the romper combinations part thingy that goes under the skirt. It has these bloomers that are slightly gathered at the hems and it has five buttons, some white rings, this puff sleeves, and sailor color, which is like this from the back. And I made a little bow tie here, just like I've seen in some historical examples. So it's just a straight piece that goes around the color here. So it's not fastened to any skirt. Yeah. And it goes over the whole thing like this, and then it fastens with a hook and eye. I only had 2.2 meters of fabric, and this is all I have left. So these tiny, tiny scraps, and honestly, I had to do some piecing to make this happen. This white cotton was just some scrap fabric that I had left from other projects. Where did the patterns come from? I used a truly Victorian 1898 walking skirt pattern to make the skirt. I just shortened it to this knee length. For the blouse part, I used the shirt waist pattern that I got from this old book. It's called Pukukaavojen piirustamiskopas and it's a Finnish pattern drafting book from 1912 and it has instructions on how to draft the shirt waist here. I didn't do it for this project but I used this previously to make shirt waists so I just took the pattern I drafted before and shortened it to the waist length and it made a really nice top for this swimsuit. For the sleeves I used sleeve from my 1901 jacket I turned this two-piece sleeve to a one-piece sleeve pattern and moved the seam to the underarm and I think it suits this blouse really nicely. I drafted the color by myself. This also has a pattern to make a sailor color for kids clothes but basically sailor color is really simple to make anyway. For the bloomers I used this old book from 1892 it has some basic patterns to make bloomers that I've used before to make my Edwardian underwear. Now I use the same pattern to draft these bloomers. I just changed it a bit, but because I've already fitted the upper part of the pattern, it was a good starting point. So now I'm ready. Now we need just some sun and beach, warmth, and I'm ready to try this on. 
and see how it actually works. So, Okay, this is a historical experiment. Swimming in Victorian gear. One, two, three, go! Well, I wouldn't want to do any competitions in this. Let's see if I take the skirt off. How is it then? Also, the skirt falls a bit. I guess it should be really tight if you want it to stay on. Okay, let's try in this more modern gear. It's quite warm. It's warmer than the modern swimsuit. So, it works. The skirt was a little bit on the way when I was swimming, so it sort of makes it harder to do the breaststroke. But yes, you can swim in it if you have to, because it's not that long. Uh, also, the waistline fell a bit when I was swimming, so I think it should be really tight in order for it to stay at the waist. When I took the skirt off, then swimming was a little bit easier. I felt a little bit air trapped inside the costume, but that was alright. I also noticed that it's actually surprisingly warm, warmer than the modern swimsuit because it's much bigger and I never used a big swimsuit like this before and the water is relatively cold so you really notice the warming effect of the swimsuit but yeah I think I'll stick to the modern swimsuit for now but I may still continue to play in it and I think it's a good beach costume anyway thanks for watching this video and see you soon bye